Hey, what's up, guys? Here's uh, the other thing I was reading. I got my hands on this. You know I love the Osprey stuff, the new Vanguard stuff. Uh, we have here the second Seminole War. Uh, as I'm in Florida right now, uh, it's, I figured it would be a good time to uh, get this book. Uh, covering, of course, the vastness of Florida and the Seminoles, who are essentially kind of a mixed tribe. Uh, they were uh, different uh, migrations of creek indians who were normally in the what would be considered alabama going down to what was at the time a spanish uh possession right uh, saint augustine was one of the oldest uh, uh settlements in this place right, of europeans and that was uh, in northern florida uh, essentially and they also mixed also with uh escaped uh, black slaves um i assume from the spanish region but because they have Spanish names. Uh, uh, the combat here is just fascinating. This this place, uh, as developed as parts of it are, there's still a huge, vast majority of this vast peninsula. Uh, this uh, state, it takes almost nine hours to get from one end to the, of, the, of the top to the bottom and to the side. Uh, in, maybe, uh, maybe eight hours or more, even with straight line roads. Uh, to have all this brush it makes it a very difficult place to conduct any kind of European style warfare. Uh, and the Seminoles fought damn hard, uh, making use of ambushes. Uh, and the, uh, there were some real setbacks here. The very first battle was basically a, an Indian Seminole attack on the, uh, uh, a group going to, uh, going to another fort and they massacred the dudes. So uh, you, as usual, you have, uh, you have the uh, kind of like the the war gaming artists also draw the the specs. You have actual artwork from from the period. You have these you know what, what do you call them lithographs, woodcuts. You have great maps. Of course, uh, this is all aligned with everything from war gaming to modeling. Uh, so it's really interesting here. Lake Oka, look how big Lake Okeechobee is. I've never been there, so I'm somewhere around here. I won't. I'm not gonna tell you. Maybe you could figure it out. But it doesn't matter. This people don't realize how huge Florida is, and almost all of it is freaking. The coasts are nice, but you got swamp and oaks, you know, just like in Europe. Uh, but you have also other things. Uh, now, we're going over this. It's very interesting. I like this here too, right? Uh, you have to be about five feet six inches high of good character. Well, I'm uh, taller than that. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I guess I have good character, but it's just a lot of interesting things in this. I enjoyed it. I went through this really quick, very readable. Uh, basically, the Indians uh, used, uh, you know, uh, tactics. They basically put a hurt on the, uh, the Americans. Uh, the Indians got the better of the, in terms of the casualty rate. And, of course, they were outnumbered. Uh, but in terms of the battle, the difficulty of fighting in this terrain is pretty much the main theme of it. I see some cool pictures here. Sketches, Osceola. You have, uh, that's uh, the name of place after the uh, Seminole leader. Now, and this here, this is the Dade Massacre. The guys who, the, the Indians, very underrated, of course. You, they, you think of them as hit and run, but their volley fire was very accurate. They really knew how to wait at the right moment. Uh, just like a uh, century, more than a century before King Philip's War, the Great Swamp Fight, they probably took out half the English that died in that battle with one volley that they were waiting in, for. And this thing happened here. They probably killed half of the uh, Americans in this battle. With one volley fire, of course, they were easy target marching through the woods. And the survivors kind of made a little uh, impromptu uh, thing here. Uh, and then, of course, they, they got massacred eventually. But three people survived. One was the guide who was... Um, a, a black uh, freed slave who was ass uh, assumed that he led them into this ambush. Of course, there was no real proof either way. Right? Just being fair, right? Uh, you know, I guess I'll be fair when, when so many others aren't. Uh, and two guys feigned death. Uh, actually, three guys feigned death. One doll got killed while they were basically making the 65 mile trip on foot back to the fort. Yeah, Jesus Christ. So, of course, the limitation of artillery, and uh, essentially, uh, like you'd see in the movie Predator. <laughs> yeah. 
course, the, in the end, the Indians really don't have a chance. And of course, this is interesting here. How they captured Osceola. So under the flag, he was under the flag of truce, and then they, they just grabbed him and put him in chains. Okay? Very, very dishonorable. I don't care if you, if you, you know, very dishonorable. And apparently, there was an uproar amongst the American public about this, how underhanded it was. Okay, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, the other thing that I find interesting about this is, uh, like, you get this guy here. You see how the regulars have a real low opinion of the volunteers, okay? Uh, and they like to use the volunteers uh, essentially as cannon fodder, okay? And this guy here in particular, he, uh, he sent the Missouri volunteers uh, to attack. And there's two times here where they had, they made frontal assaults essentially on fortified Seminole positions. Uh, and they suffered heavy casualties doing that. Um, and he basically said the Missouri, the Missourians ran, but the majority of them actually didn't run. The men actually went forward uh, and got caught in, the, caught in the swamp and fought as best they could from behind trees until this guy finally sent the regulars up to try to help them. Okay. Nice. Good job. Okay. Uh, and in the last battle, too, at Lake Okeechobee, that thing happens. And, of course, I always like the art that's done here. You, know, you can see where it's very difficult to fight like this in the, in the woods, but uh, a, a bayonet charge with enough guys, that's going to be something, uh, oof. that's, that's going to be a uh, bear to deal with. And Indians usually had a problem dealing with that when it did actually happen. Of course, they were better in hand-to-hand -hand combat using, you know, clubs, which and you know, they're going to be better in close, close range. So anyway, just interesting. Now, oh, and you got these wargaming type uh, maps. At the cool battles, they were using rockets. They were shooting rockets. <laughs> the Indians, um, but uh, eventually the Seminoles lost. Right? So now, uh, a postscript. When I think about it, who am I rooting for? Well, uh, uh, obviously, uh, I'm for I'm for the Indians. Right? Oh my God! Uh, what, I thought, uh, why am I always seem to be for the Indians? Well, in the end, you know, they, they were uh, frankly. <laughs> What was done to them was bullshit. Now you can say, well, the right of conquering. Okay. Uh, you know, and, there, and one of the other themes, right? I bring up the frontal assault themes, which are going to be a real problem in the next century, which get a lot of people killed against the firepower. Uh, but also, there's plenty of seminal traders, plenty of seminals selling them out. They even had Delawares that were left, Delaware, Lenape Indians, who were helping them. Uh, the Americans to, to hunt these guys down and you see that all across the board and, and eventually the Seminoles who were left had to leave it's also interesting how these Seminoles had slaves okay, there's an issue now with the, all the, uh, the going back and uh, uh, going after everybody uh, Indians had a lot of uh, uh, later they had a lot of uh, African American slaves okay? I mean I taught, you know, they, they had them right? they brought them with them to the territories the ones who eventually surrendered and went with the Americans. But all that's uh, aside from the main issue is that in the end, and I like Andrew Jackson, okay? I understand why he didn't like the Indians if you look at his personal history. All that aside though, okay, we're talking about historicism. We're talking about forces that go on long after you and I are gone, that were around long before you and I were born, and that take shape and move in, in drifts, you know, uh, uh, in tides that even the people that at the time are in charge of it have no idea where this is going to go. The force that this man represents, regardless if I feel bad for the guy getting sent to get you know, shot up in a, in a swamp that is, is super hot and then super cold when it rains. It actually gets pretty chilly down here uh, uh, at times. Uh, the force they represent is the same force that's eating uh, us up. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the federal entity is always there, okay? Always breaking its promises, always there eating you up, always deciding who the new favored one is and who needs to now be jettisoned or moved, right, through different manners. And so in that regard, which takes a little nuance of thinking, okay, to think of, okay, regardless of what, you know, this would be used today to justify, you know, uh, corporate leftist slogans, uh, you know, once again, we are the Indians. Later.